Okay. Um, hi. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for coming. And uh, Livia, thanks for having me. Um, this is my first time at the Dallas conference, and it's been, it's been a blast. I mean, it's kind of fun hanging out with other people who actually know what it is that you know, I spent so much of my life doing. You know, most of my friends and family just have, have no, no clue what it is I get up to. Um, so I guess in terms of introduction, um, I'm um, here mostly representing my teacher, who is Wang Liping, and he's a Taoist teacher. Um, and I've been a student of his for a while. I started studying Taoism uh, with my first Taoist teacher in, in 97, um, and just fell in love, with, just fell in love with, with the whole thing, the culture, the practice, everything about it just resonated on, on a really deep level. And uh, so I just continued to just, I was thirsty for more. Um, and my, my first teacher, he passed away, unfortunately. Um, he was quite old. And so I, I went to China and, and lived in China for several years and just was hungry, you know. I wanted to learn everything I could. Um, and internal alchemy was really top of the list for me throughout it all. Um, but I kind of had a sense from the beginning that, you, you know, you shouldn't just open a book and learn from a book. but also have a teacher, and books are very helpful, but you, you need to have the teacher. So I, I, you know, I looked around, I waited, and um, went to Taiwan as well, mainland China, Beijing, and, and uh, eventually came across Wang Liping, and, and um, it was a good match for me, and um, I, I'm quite happy. Um, so anyways, let's get onto the, onto the show here. So I thought I would, I would do a, a presentation that's a little more tied into the theme of, of our conference, which is time. Um, it's, a, it's a fascinating subject, so I, I put together a little uh, little thing here. Um, so working with time and Nadan practice. Um, okay, let's move onwards. So time is is essential to Nadan practice. Um, I, I like in practice when I'm especially when I'm teaching students to sort of it's like it's like cooking. You know, it, it, you're going into the kitchen. You got to have a kitchen, and you get you know you get your 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 ingredients that you're going to cook. You have, you have to get a, a recipe so you know what you're going to cook. For me, anyways, I'm a terrible cook. Actually, my wife, if she was here right now, she'd be, <laughs> she'd be laughing because uh, I know nothing about cooking. Uh, <laughs> um, you, know, you, you, know, you know, pot, you know, to put the ingredients in, and then you, you put a, a lid on the pot, and then you, you turn on the fire, and then you, you let it cook. Uh, and, of course, there is a metaphor, borrowed from external alchemy, um, to talk about a, the internal energetic processes that we're working with. Um, and one of the main aspects of that is fire phasing, or huo ho. Um, but I, don't, I, I decided with this talk to sort of stay away from huo ho. It's sort of the obvious go-to to talk about time within internal alchemy. I thought I would take a different, different tact here and look at it from some other perspectives. Um, so bear with me. Um, my main, I guess my main point this morning is, is one way that we can work with time in Nadan is using the structure of the session. So a session is where we, like Scotty demonstrated, you sit down, cross the legs, uh, and we start the practice. And the session can last for an hour, two, three, more. Um, and then there's a, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, and that structure in itself, as we'll go into, um, helps us develop a, we develop a relationship with time, but we also change time, which I'll go into in a moment. Um, right here, actually I say, you know, it helps. It actually breaks time and sets up new time. So it's very interesting. I love Taoism because it, it, it's always, it's so paradoxical. It's always kind of just flowing and it never really grasps onto one thing. You're just constantly kind of going around everything, right? So we often hear about the um, going with the flow, um, harmonizing with, with the patterns of nature, which you call shun, like you, you go with things, right? But there's also ni, right? There's also this other way of going about things, which is going against the, <coughs> the normal course of things to return to the source. Um, and actually, within our, our lineage, we, we use both, right? Like, you don't always just want to go against. Sometimes it's very healthy to go with um, and you know, harmonize with the, the cycles of, of, you know, the year, the months, um, the moon, um, whatever it is, right? These various cycles that we're embedded in all the time. Um, but for usually with a Nadan session, when we do Nadan, we want to break that and we want to set up new time 
which I'll go into as, as we go here. Uh, before I kind of jump into it, I wanted to put forward uh, this, this character word, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And I'm taking, a little, I'm taking some liberty here with the translation. So usually this would be um, continue or continuous. So in modern Chinese, be ji xu, right? So you have this idea of continuing. Um, as I've sort of wrestled with all this Taoist stuff to try and figure out, I've sort of, it seems to be there's sort of three levels of meaning to a lot of words. There's modern Chinese, classical Chinese, and then Taoist, China, Taoist meaning. And Taoist meaning, they seem to have their own kind of, and often secretive um, interpretations of characters and, and whatnot. So I'm kind of going more with what I've learned from my teacher in terms of how he uses this word, this character. Um, so I'm going in a sense of sequence in terms of a process, a continuing sequence of something happening over time. Um, and sometimes he'll use it to refer to uh, physical processes, energetic processes, or even mental processes in the body. Um, so physical processes, you know, your heartbeat, uh, respiration, um, energetic things that are even happening, even your mental processes, you're thinking about something. You know, I've, in the last day, I've, no, I've been thinking about this presentation a lot. So I've noticed I've had this process, this shoe going on in my head, you know, okay, you know, is the PowerPoint going to work? Is, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, it can also refer to the sequence of one's life as in a life path. So um, we often talk about life path in, in Taoist practice, Ming, but this is another way of looking at it. So there's idea of a se we're, we're in our life, we're going to have a sequence, and that's going to be our life. Um, and so sequence and time are connected. We use progress of events to recognize time. I'm talking more about a subjective experience of time. Right? So our awareness of what time is, is often kind of, um, we know it by the events that happen. Um, so if there's not a lot of stuff happening, time seems to kind of slow down. And if there's a lot of stuff we're really stimulated and stuff, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's, it's like this feeling of, wow, that time just flew. You know, if you're with, like we had a great lunch the other day, right? Fantastic lunch, we're chatting. It was done in like a minute. You know, it was so fast, right? The time just sped up because this is so much, um, we're having such a good time, right? So um, time is malleable from my, my experience. I'm not an expert. Well, you'll find out next week with the experts. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> with the time conference. Um, but let's, for this talk, let's just go with it. So time is relative. It can be changed. If we regulate a sequence of events, we also regulate our experience of time. Um, and sequence of events here, I'm, I'm more relating to energetic sequences inside the body. So just that's, I'm going to be using this throughout the talk. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is, this is the session. I call it the anatomy of an ADAN session. It's a structure. Uh, and this is my main point, is that through using the structure, we're breaking time and creating new time. Um, a session with, with what we practice is really break, broke down to three parts. So we have preparation, then we have methods and techniques, and then we have stillness. And, and stillness is really the most important. That's, that's where the magic happens. Um, but we do use preparations and methods. Um, so the first thing here we'll look at is preparation. So preparation is basically you're learning using, you're using techniques to still the body and mind and prepare for the alchemical work. Um, and we use this to pattern the shu, right? So when we first sit down to meditate, our internal shu, these sequences that are going on, it's going to be messy. It's going to be luan, you know? It's, they're they're, they're going to be a little chaotic. And so by stilling the mind and body, these sequences will begin becoming more regulated, uh, patterned, and will enter into some level of stillness. Once we're in the zone, and that can take from five to 45 minutes, um, there's, it's, it's qu um, quite, there's a lot of things we can do there. Um, once we're ready to go, then we'll pull out the methods. We'll do something. We'll work with specific techniques to get things done. So in alchemy, we'll, we'll, we'll generally have an idea of sort of what we're working on in that session. Um, or we can use an intuitive sense to figure out what it is when we get to this point. Um, but with methods, we're doing something. We're working in time to get things done. So it's a yo way approach. Um, and we're OK with that. Um, stillness, after, sorry, after we get things done, so we complete that process. And that could be anything. You know, it's like we could be working with canon Lee between the two, the middle field. Or we could be um, working with the lower field. We could be cycling energy 
through the internal organs, refining zinc into qi, whatever it is, you know, just certain things that we'd be doing. Um, once we've sort of finished that, then we go into stillness. And this is a really big part of our lineage. I don't have much experience with other lineages, so maybe it's, it's universal. But for us, he, uh, Wang Liping always mentions he got, the stillness is that's where things happen. And we move into a state of what he calls Wu Wei. And we just allow and wait for the results to emerge. Um, how much time do I have? We yeah, have about 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. So, I thought I'd bring up these Xian Tian and Hou Tian, the pre-celestial and post-celestial. And these are quite complex. There's a lot going on here, as you guys know. Um, so this is one perspective on them that will help with this discussion. Um, so Nadan requires us to move between two perspectives. Right? So we've got the pre-celestial and the post-celestial. And for Nadan, we're, we're we're, kinda, we're moving between the two, we're shifting, almost like phasing between the two. The first one is post-celestial, and it's the experience, um, it, this is how we experience the world with our physical senses. We're feeling the world around us with the physical senses. Um, we're in three-dimensional time and space. So right now in this, this, this talk, you know, we're pretty much in a po post-celestial. Hopefully I haven't put you into a pre-celestial <laughs> sleep. <laughs> Hopefully you're still, you're still here. And we're using the Shi Shen, which is, I've translated as the spirit of recognition. And so Shen is spirit, or it's the energy associated with our consciousness that goes out through our senses and engages with the reality around us. And this is, this is good. This is an important, um, you know, when you're driving and, and there's a red light, I mean, you want your Shi Shen to, <laughs> you know, tell you to step on the brake, right? Um, or you're going to have trouble. Uh, so we're intentionally doing things in a normal world, and time exists normally, in, in scare quotes. Uh, however, there's this other way we can experience things. That's from the pre-celestial perspective. It's, it's really about, from my experience, is experiencing the source of things. Um, right? So it, it, in my understanding of sort of the Taoist um, cosmology, way things, the creation, right, is that's a process, like Tao Te Ching, chapter 42, that's a process that happens in every moment. It's not some time way back in history and, and now we have this. It's, it's a process, it's an ongoing process. What is interesting is how we observe that process. What perspective are we looking at it from? Uh, and so pre-celestial is we're more in tune with our Yuan Shen, the original spirit. Um, and we're, we're observing, we're experiencing events from a, from a different perspective. And in that perspective, there's, there's no time. I, I'm being a little tongue in cheek. There might, it, it, it's, you know, there's probably a little bit of time, but it becomes less and less, and things really slow down. You become very, very present in the moment. Um, and this happens in stillness. Uh, so, you know, how we do that in meditation is we, we turn around our shi shen, bring it back into the body. So that the, you know, gui shen, the, 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 the spirit returns into the body. Uh, and then we slowly go through this process of, of developing the yuan shen, the, the, the original spirit. Um, and pre-celestial is best, but we can also use the post-celestial. So in our lineage, we, we use both. Um, so part one, preparation, is post-celestial. We're working in normal time to regulate various sequences in the body, the xu, right? So this is going back to the structure of the session. So I'm putting everything together now. Um, so in preparation, it's mostly post-celestial work. Then we start working with the methods, and it's... We're, we're becoming more and more still, but we're still working in time. We're still thinking, okay, I'm going to drop, you know, I'm going to drop the fire down into the lower field and try to, you know, combine it or, or bring a drop of chu yang up from my hui in into my lower field. Whatever it is you're doing, you're still kind of trying to do something, right? So I sort of see it as a pre, you're in, you're in between, working things to get done. Experience of time has begun to shift. Uh, and then we hit stillness, um, and that's pre-celestial. Each moment is experienced outside of time from, from perspective of origin. Um, and this is important for, for Nei Dan because to form the elixir, we need to work with our original Jing, our original Qi, and original Shen, right? Uh, and those energies we need to ex we experience in a pre celestial state. You got to get really still and really just tuned in to feel the vibration of your original Jing and begin working with that. Um, Oh, wow. Yeah, so we have another uh, concept here, uh, living zi time. So we've talked, some of the other talks have touched on um, the zi time, zi shi. 
Uh, and there's a lot of different perspectives on um, to the sure. Even with our lineage, we were talking about yesterday, yeah. Wang Liping has at least three different ways of working with to the sure and ways of. Taoist! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like to confuse us. It's great. I love it. Uh, and so, uh, living to the, so stillness is something called to the time. So, from one perspective, to the time can all. It's, so, first of all, to the time is the first of the earthly branch, right? So, Tian Gan Di Zhi. And it's. It, these are ways of, of five, uh, five, minutes, five, more five more minutes. Okay, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm good. I think we can do this in five minutes. Okay. Yeah, I gotta regulate time. Okay, so Tian Gan Di Zhi, right? The Zi is the first of the um, the earthly the Di Zhi, right? It's a, sequence. it's a sequence, and it's it's so it's representing the start of a time sequence, right? It's starting at the top when time is starting. And so in stillness, when you have zi time, it's from one perspective, so not looking at the time cycles throughout the day or whatever, this is from a different perspective, we can say that stillness is zi time, zi shi, right? Um, so we have stillness, no sense of time, everything's just, you're, you're in the zone, right? You're inside, you're, you're with the body, you're very present, there's no random thoughts, you're totally focused. But there's also not a lot of energetic stuff maybe happening yet either. It's that quiet before things get going. And we call that to the time. Now, when things get going, when a new process begins out of the stillness, we have entered living to the time. And huo zi shi also, also has other perspectives on it as well. But from this, what I'm talking about today is specifically to do with this. Um, and that's when the time has come alive, where something is moving. There is an energetic activation within the body, right? Um, some, maybe the, the, if you're working with the dan, you're trying to form the dan, you're getting some sort of the vibration, the pulse, the heat, whatever it is, it's, it's activated, something is happening. We've done the methods, we're in stillness, and now we're waiting for it to start. And I, I like, here's a poetic thing. It's, it's like on a, on, you have a, a calm lake, right? No wind, and then all of a, you know, all of a sudden, you have the first, breath of, of, of wind, the breeze that just begins to crest the surface and you have these ripples and there's movement, right? So out of stillness comes movement. Um, and so that's, that's what it feels like in meditation. Which brings us to the last uh, slide here, which is, I'm, I'm sure some of you are familiar with the old uh, Fu hexagram, which is so important in internal alchemy. We have, uh, if you look at the top here, it's a broken line represents yin, the bottom line represents yang, and things be with each we sing, things begin from the bottom, and, and when new lines are introduced, they go from the bottom up. So yin, so within extreme yin, stillness, right? We, we want to harness this extreme yin. Yang begins to arise, um, and that's why meditating in caves is great because they're so still, right? So much yin, and in that extreme yin, you can you can get stuff going on. Um, out of extreme stillness of yin, movement of yang begins. The movement is often ener energetic activation, which I've, I've talked about. Um, and this activation progresses through a sequence. So it has its own, you don't want to get involved with it. Like when, when something activates inside, uh, you know, it could be the, the orbit up the back, down the front, whatever it is. You, when our, in our system, in our lineage, you, you just observe. You just let it be. You stay in the pre-celestial state. You stay in that Wu Wei state. And you don't, it, it knows what it needs to do. It's smart. It has intelligence. Uh, Wang Liping often says, you know, this stuff, it has intelligence. Your lower field, it knows what it needs to do. Use, use the Yowei methods to kind of get it going a little bit, but then you just, it, you just let it go. Practitioner allows process to unfold naturally and just observe. And this is really important. And so that's the new time that you're, you'll have a new sense of time through that sequence, because our sense of time is, is bound with sequence. And so we'll experience new time. Uh, until the end of the session, and then you know you finish and go do laundry and you know <laughs> to get on with your life, right? Normal time. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, that's that was my wrap up. So prep method, stillness, new time. Yeah, yeah. So pattern the messy time method. Start something new, and then stillness keeps other time on pause while these new sequences in the body, usually in the body. At higher levels, it's outside the body, but. First, we start the furnace as the body initially with alchemy. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs>